Welcome to Facts TV News, where everything is true. Deceased Clarendon crash victims identified. The police have now released the identities of two people killed in a crash in Osborne Store, Clarendon, on Tuesday. They are Heather Grant, 33, of Christina, Manchester, and a man known as Nigel Ambersley, whose address was not immediately obtained. Grant's husband, a police corporal, was badly injured in the crash and has been hospitalized in a serious condition. The crash happened about 1 p.m. The four past police say Grant, her husband, Ambersley, and another woman were traveling in a Toyota Scarlet when it collided with a Nissan Latio motor car with one occupant on board. All five crash victims were taken to hospital where Grant and Ambersley were pronounced dead. The other three were admitted. Activities at Petrodrum Refinery halted after fire. Activities at the Petrodrum Limited Refinery have been halted after an electrical fire, which started approximately 12 p.m. on Wednesday, caused minor damage to equipment at the site. The company, in a statement, said that evaluations are being done to ascertain the cause of the fire. Our team of technical safety experts is conducting an assessment to ascertain the cause of the fire. As a precaution, activities at the refinery have been temporarily halted to accommodate a comprehensive damage assessment, Petrodram said. The company added that though there was damage from the fire, it will not affect the current supply of Petrodram products to the market as there is adequate supply of finished products. Petrodram Limited will update its customers in short order regarding the resumption of production at the refinery, the statement said. Man fined $110,000 for a false declaration on passport application. A man was fined a total of $110,000 for presenting false information on his passport application when he appeared before the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Courts on Tuesday. Michael Campbell pleaded guilty to making a false declaration on a passport application form and obtaining a passport by means of a false document. Court documents reveal that the National Intelligence Bureau Immigration Investigation Unit found discrepancies with the application can be made for the renewal of his passport. Preliminary checks of the passport consultation system show that Campbell submitted an application to the agency through the Jamaican Consulate in Toronto, Canada for the passport renewal, which was issued to him in September 2007 as a first-time applicant. This application was supported by a birth certificate. The system also showed another passport bearing the name Ricardo Alfonso Smart, appearing to be the same as Campbell's. Smart's passport was issued in March 2003. Further examinations of the file showed that Campbell's identity was previously confirmed by his sister. She identified the image from the current application in the name Michael Isaac Campbell and the previous application in the name Ricardo Alfonso Smart to be that of her brother. Campbell returned to the island on Monday, April 18, 2022, and indicated he was prepared to attend a police interview. He was interviewed on Thursday, April 21, 2022, and was later arrested. The court would impose fines at this time, fines totaling $110,000. Are you in a position to deal with that today, sir? said Senior Parish Judge Lorian Cole Montague. Yes, Your Honor, Campbell responded. Very good. For making a declaration, you are fined $50,000 or six months imprisonment. In relation to obtaining a passport by means of forged documents, you are fined $60,000 or nine months imprisonment, the judge advised him. One last push to find missing grandma. A flash flood warning is keeping divers brought in by the St. James Municipal Corporation from making one last push to find 68-year-old Beryl Walters who was swept away by floodwaters in Westgate, Montego Bay, last week, Tuesday. The search has not been called off. We are giving it a last thrust. We are pushing one more time to see if we can get some signs of the missing individual, acting mayor of Montego Bay Richard Vernon told reporters on Monday. We are still planning to use divers to search sections of the river that is not reachable by heavy equipment and that is the part that is being hampered by the weather. The divers from their experience won't enter the water if we are under a certain condition and we are still under flash flood warning, so we have to wait and we have to be patient with the situation, he explained. 
The divers were supposed to start their search on Sunday. On Tuesday, nothing had changed. Vernon is hoping the weather will cooperate and that they will have some closure for the grieving family that is already grappling with the drowning of Walter's 12-year-old granddaughter, Janelle. Almost every day since the incident, when the permitting, groups of relatives and friends have patrolled the banks of the river, hoping to find the missing woman who was so loved by her late granddaughter. On Sunday, there was a massive operation involving the use of heavy equipment to clean debris from the river. Alerted by the strong order, just under the bridge near where the car had entered the water, they were convinced they had found her. That proved to be a false alarm. If there is no sign of her after the diver's last attempt, Vernon said, the municipal corporation would then leave the matter up to the police. At that point, I will turn over the matter to the police for them to do whatever closure they have to do. But for us at the municipal corporation, at that point we would have done our best in terms of helping the family, he said. Police to intervene as CRH patient chooses obia over medical care. The police are now exploring how best to support Connor Regional Hospital, CRH, in ensuring that a man whose relatives and friends intimidated the hospital staff into releasing him from the medical facility so that he could see the services of an obia practitioner will return to get medical care. We are looking at the situation to see what next the police can do to intervene in the man's condition because the medical team are of the view that he has a medical condition and not a spiritual condition as we call Obio, Assistant Commissioner of Police for Air 1 Clifford Chambers said in a video release to the media on Tuesday. A boisterous group of man's friend and family converged on the hospital accident and emergency unit Tuesday morning, demanding that the Mafuta St. James resident be released from hospital. He was restrained based on his behavior by the medical team and was being treated. However, his relatives might have been of the view that the issue that he was suffering from was not medical but was spiritual and proceeded to release the restrained and became boisterous with the medical team, indicating that they want him to be released from the hospital, said Chambers. As a result of that, the medical team, I was advised, decided to release the patient into the custody of his mother and has his mother signed a release form and thereafter they left with him, Chambers added. Hospital staff became rattled during the exchange with the patient's friends and relatives and called the police from a post located on the hospital compound. It is not uncommon for medical staff in sections of the country to work in challenging and dangerous situations and when news initially broke of the situation appeared to be the latest such incident. However, Chambers stressed that, contrary to reports in sections of the media, there was no confrontation between the police and armed individuals or between the police and the man's relatives. He also rejected reports that the man was seeking medical care was a don. The gentleman is a former taxi operator and from all indication was never a part of any gang and has never been involved in any confrontation with the police, said Chambers. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton also felt compelled to comment on the issue in Parliament. It involved no guns. It involved a group of family members, friends, who were wanting a patient discharge, and they were boisterous, they were loud. But there were no guns drawn or threats on gunfire exchange, as it being reported in sections of the media, he said. Though no weapons were involved, the incident was enough to traumatize some hospital employees who received counseling after the exchange. Some called in sick later in the day, but there was minimal impact at the facility as administrators put contingency plans in place. The hospital's chaplain will continue counseling session and administrators have indicated that they will work closely with the police to ensure the facility remains secure. PEP Panic The students are scheduled to sit the examinations yesterday and today. Some of the educators told reporters that while there is a full resumption of physical classes, there were nevertheless several students who barely attended online class last year causing them to miss out on important lessons. But the educators admitted that they tried their best with the students and even called them to school over the Easter holidays to improve their readiness. We are as ready as we can be. I don't think there's anything else that we can do right now. For the Easter holiday, 
we just had the Good Friday and Easter Monday, but we are back on Tuesday. The teachers have given up their holidays just to make sure students are adequately prepared as possible, Central Bran, all age school principal Michael Sutherland said, noting that 60 of his students will be sitting the exam. He said he is optimistic that the students will pursue good results, but was bothered about those who have missed out on classes for a long period. I am being positive because I do expect a surprise. Our children have really been working hard. They are students who have not shown up for classes until a month ago. They just resurfaced and those same students didn't even come for the extra week of classes, so I am worried about those, he said. At Maxfield Primary School, there are 95 students scheduled for the exams. The school's principal, Tracy Ann Holloway Richards, told reporters that students aren't fully prepared for exams because they were operating in an online space for the first term. This is term two, and the exams are being administered. So I know for a fact that teachers have done their best to prepare their students and the children in their own way to see how much they could revise for their exams, she said. So we're hoping for the best and that the test will not be too hard and that the Education Ministry will exercise some leniency with regards to how they mark these exams so the children can pass for a school suitable for their choice, she added. Ask if she's confident that there'll be good exam results, Holloway Richard said. If we were operating in regular face-to-face -face classes, I could confidently say yes. I am expecting good passes, but we have quite a few students who were not able to access online classes for term one, and that have been detrimental for them because they would have missed out key information that they should have known. So it is just the grace of God that is going to carry these children through, she said. At the Salvation Army School for the Blind, there is similar concern for the students. Noting that eight students will be sitting the exam, the school's principal explained that although preparations could have been better for students, they are ready to go. We are at a point where we know that they can go and do it. People have to understand where we are coming from. We are always at the disadvantage, but no disadvantages are general to everyone. We know that the teachers have done their best. We have not had holidays for them. So we think we have done our best, the principal stated. At Burn Savannah Primary, 84 students will be sitting the PEP exam. According to acting principal Gary Johnson, there is a gap in readiness for the students, but I think we have reached a good level of confidence in the students because we have worked overtime for extra lessons and we did Easter classes. The teachers also work assiduously with some parents who have pulled their weight. Concerns have been mounted among stakeholders in the education sector about the students' readiness to sit exams, which led to several changes in issuing PEP components. A meeting held in February by the National Standards Curriculum PEP Monitoring Committee saw the cancellation of the performed based test component of the exam, which was scheduled for March 22 and 24. Additionally, the ability test originally set for February was pushed back to March. Taxi operators in Norwood protest over bad road conditions. Taxi operators yesterday morning blocked Norwood Drive in Norwood in St. James to protest poor road conditions. They say the roadway has been in a bad state for several years. The protesters use old refrigerators, trees, old motor vehicle parts, boulders and other debris to block the road. Albion, where the church is coming up to Norwood, there are a lot of big potholes and small potholes. Norwood is a big area and we have a lot of cars on this road. At least 30 to 50 vehicles run this road, said tax operator Colin Ferguson, who said that he has been operating for 25 years. The good thing is the council says work will start tomorrow, so let us see what will happen, a disgruntled Ferguson said. Community members were adamant that if no road work started, they will block the road again. Joshua Cummins, counsel of the Montego Bay Central, said he was surprised by the protest. I honestly didn't expect this demonstration because we had a meeting on Thursday to give an update to the taxi operators as to the direction we are going to where the road is concerned, he said. We are going to start from the church where we left off to continue paving the road, not to patch the road, 
and put in the drainage to take the water off the road. Listening to them, I think the taxi operators are divided. One set knows what is happening and the other don't know. When information is given out, the message is not getting to some, Cummings explained. Valerie Reed, taxi operator, stated that the rain has made the road worse. The councillor promised to fix the road months ago and nothing now happened. He is not communicating with us to tell us what stage they are at, so that is what angered the drivers yesterday morning. The roads are bad and if you look, you will see the whole them. From the church come right up is the main road and that is where we have the problem with. We want the road to fix. Car parts are very expensive and our cars are being damaged, Reed said. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell for daily updates.